When this lost horse saw who was standing in front of him, he began to shed tears. Emily's heart pounded in her chest as she watched the encroaching wildfire from her window, its flickering tongues of flame consuming everything in their path. The sight was a horrifying dance of destruction that left her momentarily frozen, yet time was running out. Don't worry, Jake. I'm going to get you out of here, Emily whispered, more to herself than anyone else, her words barely audible over the roar of the fire. She shoved her feet into her boots, not even bothering to tie them, and dashed for the barn. Her lungs gasped for air as she reached the structure, the smell of smoke already mingling with the scent of hay and horse. Inside, Jake was visibly frightened, his flanks sweaty, eyes wide, hooves stamping on the ground in anxiety. The other horses, too, seemed to understand the looming danger, their whinnies and snorts filling the air. Taking deep, calming breaths to steady herself, for she knew she had to be strong for them, Emily acted swiftly. She led the other horses out first, tying them to a fence that was as far from the encroaching flames as possible. She looked at Jake as she did so, whispering words of comfort. Hold on, buddy. You're next. But when Emily turned back to retrieve her cherished stallion, her world came crashing down. A loud crack echoed through the air, almost as if the sky itself were splitting. A burning tree, one of the many casualties of this merciless fire, collapsed across the barn's entrance, blocking it with an impassable wall of flame and burning wood. Jake! Jake! she screamed his name, her voice raw with despair, her hands reaching out futilely as if she could somehow pull him through the flames. The heat was blistering, singeing the ends of her hair, warning her of the impossibility of her actions. Reality set in with a gut-wrenching jolt. She couldn't get to him. Not this way. If she tried to cross the wall of flames, she'd be jeopardizing not just her life, but also any chance Jake might have at survival. Panicked but resolute, she retreated, her eyes stinging, not just from the smoke, but also from tears that she could no longer hold back. Racing back to her house, which was still yet untouched, but not for much longer, Emily dialed emergency services with trembling hands. She called the fire department, relayed her dire situation, and then contacted Animal Control to provide details of her barn and Jake. Her voice broke as she explained, but she forced herself to speak clearly, to give Jake whatever small chance she could. She hung up, heart pounding, fighting against the encroaching sense of helplessness. Emily looked out the window at the once beautiful hills now being consumed by a merciless inferno. As the sky turned from orange to a smoky gray, she folded her hands in front of her, tears slipping down her cheeks, and prayed for a miracle, for Jake's survival, for her own shattered heart, and for a life that would never be the same again. Months after the wildfire had raged through her property, reducing her home and barn to ashes, Emily found herself in a peculiar sort of limbo. Insurance had come through, and her home was being rebuilt, a testament to resilience and the human capacity for new beginnings. But amidst the smell of fresh paint and new lumber, there was an emptiness that material objects couldn't fill, the absence of Jake, her beloved stallion. Every evening after the contractors had gone home and she was left alone in the skeletal frame of her rebuilding life, Emily would sit down with her laptop. She'd click through endless databases of rescued animals, her eyes scanning over photographs of horses that were looking for a second chance at a home. She had visited numerous sanctuaries, shelters, and even impromptu rescue setups in neighboring states. She met horses that had been saved from fires, floods, and neglect, each with eyes that held stories of their own. But Jake's eyes were not among them. With every no she received, her heart sank deeper into a pit of despair she feared she couldn't climb out of. At the same time, several hundred miles away, Jake had indeed survived the wildfire, his rescue nothing short of a miracle. Firefighters had found him in a disheveled but alive state, frightened and skittish, yet unharmed. He'd been moved to a well-maintained sanctuary that specialized in caring for animals who had survived natural disasters. The caregivers there named him Phoenix, inspired by the mythical bird that rises from its own ashes, symbolic of his miraculous survival. 
Despite the sanctuary's lush green pastures and the gentle touch of the caregivers, Jake was not himself. He ate, he galloped, he neighed, but something was missing. Those who tended to him noticed that he'd often stand alone at the edge of the paddock, his eyes staring into the distant hills as if searching for a missing piece of his soul. On the surface, he had everything a horse could need, food, shelter, companionship, but what they couldn't provide him was the one thing he longed for the most, Emily. The caregivers tried introducing him to various herds, thinking he might integrate and find a new family, but Jake remained the same, amiable but distant, participating but never truly belonging. His eyes continued to search as though hoping to glimpse a familiar face coming over the horizon. Both Emily and Jake, separated by miles and circumstances, were similar in their quiet yearning. They went through the motions, taking each day as it came, living their new realities while grappling with a profound sense of loss. Emily, with her half-built home, and Jake in his sanctuary miles away, were tied by an invisible thread of shared history and love, a thread stretched thin by distance and time, but not broken. As Emily closed her laptop one more evening, her face wet with tears, and as Jake turned away from his perennial vigil at the paddock's edge, both seemed to whisper a silent plea to the universe. It was a plea of hope, tinged with desperation, asking for something, anything, that would lead them back to each other. Almost two years had rolled by since that devastating wildfire, years that felt like an eternity to Emily. The rebuilding was almost complete, the new barn standing tall, and her new home looking more like a home again. Yet despite these physical manifestations of recovery, an invisible void loomed large. Jake was missing, and with him a piece of Emily's soul. She had nearly given up hope, her daily ritual of checking emails from horse rescue organizations more an act of going through the motions than of genuine expectation. On an ordinary afternoon, sandwiched between moments of routine, Emily's email pinged with a new message. The subject line read, Is this your horse? Her heart leapt into her throat as she clicked open the email. The attachment loaded, unveiling a picture of a stallion that bore a striking resemblance to Jake. The horse was older, a bit worn by the years, but the eyes, the eyes held a familiar gleam that pierced straight through Emily's heart. In mere hours, her car was packed and she was on the road. The sanctuary was states away, but distance meant nothing now. She drove through the night, each passing mile a knot unraveling in her chest. When dawn broke, she found herself at the sanctuary gates, her eyes red from a sleepless journey but gleaming with a hope she hadn't felt in years. She stepped out of her car and was greeted by a sanctuary worker. They walked her through rows of stables, each filled with beautiful, resilient horses who had stories of their own. Yet with every stallion that was not Jake, her heart sank a fraction more. Self-doubt crept in. What if it wasn't him? What if she had raced halfway across the country chasing a ghost? Then they reached the last stable. Emily's eyes fell upon a stallion busy with his hay, his back to her. He was older, his coat lacking some of its previous luster, but his build, his stance, they were unmistakably Jake's. Her eyes welled up, a mixture of relief and overwhelming emotion flooding her senses. Could it be? She took a cautious step closer, her boot crunching softly on the straw-covered ground. At that, the horse's ears perked up. It was as if an invisible string connected them, and her mere footsteps had sent a ripple along it. Slowly, the stallion turned his head, and their eyes locked. Time froze in that moment, the world around them blurring into insignificance. Emily saw recognition flash across Jake's eyes, like the first flicker of a lighthouse cutting through a long, dark night. They held each other's gaze, each drinking in the sight of the other, affirming that this was real, not a mirage born of desperate hope. And in that fragile, sacred moment, separated by years and circumstances, by wildfires and heartbreak, Emily and Jake were finally home. They didn't need words or embraces. Their eyes said it all. Through trials and tribulations, through nearly insurmountable odds, they had found each other once more, each filling the void that had haunted the other for so long, each finally complete. 
Jake's eyes met Emily's with a sense of inquisitiveness, almost as if he were leafing through the pages of his memory. And then it clicked. A cacophony of neighs burst forth, filling the air with a sound that had a symphonic quality to it, each note intertwined with palpable emotion. His eyes grew visibly moist, a spectacle that made the sanctuary staff exchange puzzled, awestruck glances. While the phenomenon of horses shedding tears is debated, for Emily, the emotional torrent that glistened in Jake's eyes was as real as the tears that streamed down her own face. With shaky hands, Emily unlatched the gate. The tension was palpable, a held breath in the air between them. As the gate swung open, Jake took deliberate steps forward and gently nudged her with his nose, his warm breath a whisper against her skin. It was a gesture so understated, yet so powerful, that Emily could no longer contain herself. Her arms went around his sturdy neck, and they both let go, the bottled-up emotions of years cascading in a mutual unspoken language of love and longing. "'It's time to go home, Jake,' Emily whispered into his ear, her voice tinged with a warmth that promised a lifetime of care and companionship. The sanctuary staff, who had been witnessing this extraordinary reunion from a distance, had no second thoughts. Some connections transcend paperwork and protocol. They understood that what Emily and Jake shared was not mere ownership. It was a bond, profound and irreplaceable. The journey back to their rebuilt home was a quiet one. The car's rumbling engine, underscored by Jake's occasional contented neighs from the trailer hitched behind. Emily felt a surreal sense of completeness. Her home, though rebuilt, had felt just like a house in Jake's absence. Now it was as if the final missing piece had clicked into place. As they arrived, the sun was setting, its golden tendrils stretching across the hills, casting long shadows and bathing everything in a soft, forgiving light. These were the same hills that had once roared with fire, separating them, but they stood now as quiet spectators to their reunion. Emily let Jake out into the pasture, and they stood there for a moment, just absorbing the world around them. From that day on, Jake would still often wander to the edge of the pasture, his eyes gazing into the distance. But unlike before, his gaze now held a sense of peace, a knowing that whatever he was searching for had been found. Emily would join him during these reflective moments, standing beside him in silent, blissful companionship. As they stood together, the hills rolling endlessly in front of them, and the setting sun bidding adieu to another day, they acknowledged, without words, without grand gestures, the incredible journey they had taken to find their way back to each other. The road had been long, fraught with trials, pain, and uncertainties. But they had navigated it all, and, as they both faced the world ahead, they did so with an understanding that they were, once again, complete.